keyboards like the NK65 Entry Edition, KBD67 Lite, and Icky68 has made the almighty Tofu fall out of flavor as a top starter custom mechanical keyboard. And while these boards have a lot to offer, in the end, they're all plastic keyboards, so they don't have that premium feeling. And having a hefty metal case was one of the main draws for me into this hobby. Today, I'll be reviewing Canon Keys Bakaneko, a keyboard that I think will be a strong contender for a starter custom mechanical keyboard. Canon Keys provided this keyboard for my honest review. I was not paid for this review, and Canon Keys did not see it before it went live. The Bakaneko is an open source case design, completely free for commercial use. Canon Keys took the design and made some tweaks of their own. The unit I have today is black, but it will also be available in white, aqua, and navy for the first round. Oh, and yes, the carrying case comes with it. This keyboard is actually painted instead of anodized because the case is made through a casting process, which does not play well with anodization. You can see these circular spots on the inside of the case from the casting process. Here's a quick visual comparison between this black painted Bakaneko and my black anodized SP111. The Bakaneko uses an O-ring gasket to mount the PCB and plate assembly, drawing inspirations from older custom mechanical keyboards like the Unicorn. This particular O-ring has a hardness of 50A, which means it's a bit harder than a pencil eraser. This keyboard also uses a dollar board with ESD protection so that the USB connection stays put while the rest of the keyboard flexes while typing. Canon Keys offers their own hotspot PCB in the standard ANSI layout with this purchase, but you'll be able to buy your own separate solderable PCB for more layout supports like a 7U spacebar and split backspace. No fancy RGB, no LED support, but it does support via out of the box for easy key remapping. It comes with an FR4 plate, and there won't be any other plate materials that you'll be able to purchase from Canon Keys. Lastly, it comes with black silicon bump-ons, screws and an alloy wrench for the dollar board, and cherry clip and stabilizers, 4 2Us and 1 6.25U. You have to use clip and stabilizers for this keyboard due to the O-ring gasket mounting style. And the best part? All of this can be yours for $130, and it will be an in-stock purchase. Let's build the keyboard first, then I'll go over my thoughts. The first thing that I like to do with a new keyboard is to chuck on the bump-ons. Next, I clipped and looped the stabilizers. For the housing, I use Crytox 205G0, but for the wires, I'm trying out this new Crytox BDZ lube. I usually use dielectric grease for the wires, but I do like this BDZ lube better because it's easier and more satisfying to apply. It's also very thick. As for the switches, I'll start with Garon Yellows, lube with 205G0, but I'll also do some typing tests with other switches. After putting in your switches, Take the O-ring and stretch it so it sits in between the plate and PCB. Let's go ahead and secure the dolly board and connect it to the main PCB. Putting together this keyboard is very simple. It's a friction fit, so just push down the plate and PCB assembly into the case. And lastly, for the keycaps, I have PBT Sugar Plum, which will be sold on Canon Keys soon. Let's move on to the typing test.
Alright, what do I think about this keyboard? First of all, due to the o-ring gasket, this keyboard got some flex to it. I actually have another keyboard that uses an o-ring gasket, the E6.5, but it's nowhere near as flexy as this one is. So in terms of the typing experience, I prefer this Bakaneko to my E6.5, which was more than double the cost. As a budget-oriented keyboard, you can't expect perfection. Rubbing my fingers along the top of the keyboard and on the right side, it has a bit of a grittiness feeling to it. But other than that, I don't have any major issues with this case. The painted finish isn't perfect, but it's good enough for me for a budget board. In terms of the design, it's a pretty simple design, and I do like the side profile. I also like how there's no screw holes on the bottom of the case. It makes it look really clean. Does it sound hollow? Uh, I mean, yeah, a bit if you listen really closely, but overall, I enjoy the sound. At $130, that makes it a bit more expensive than the NK65 Entry Edition and KBD67 Lite. You won't get features like RGB or included sound dampening like you can with the injection mode options, but if you're someone who just wants a simple keyboard that feels great and sounds great without any foam or silicone, this is pretty darn close. The main reason why I say it's close is due to the inconsistent paint finish, but I really enjoy the typing experience and the sound. Basically, if you were ever considering a tofu over the injected molded options, get the Bakoneko instead because it's better in every way, including the price. However, the Bakoneko does sit in a difficult spot due to the recent release of the GMMK Pro at $170. And honestly, a bunch of entry-level keyboards do now. For $40 more, you get a whole lot more keyboard with the exploded 75% layout, per key RGB, and so on. I don't have one myself because I cancelled my pre-order, but I've been watching reviews, and even though people are kinda memeing on the GMMK Pro, and I don't blame them because I really hate their marketing and their quote unquote white ice, it's silver, stop calling it white ice, it's for sure a strong contender for folks who are willing to shell out a bit more dough. If I was just starting out in this hobby again, would I buy the Bakoneko as my first board? I wouldn't, mainly because it's a 60% and I prefer having physical arrow keys. If there was a 65%, then I would definitely choose it over the NK65 Entry Edition and others. However, I don't think I would choose it over the GMMK Pro. I'll be willing to pay more for the 75% layout and other features. But if you want a simple 60% metal keyboard without all the bells and whistles, you can't go wrong with the Bakoneko. I could definitely see someone using this for quite a while as their first board. That's it for me today. Please like the video if you found it helpful and subscribe to stay updated on my future content. Until next time.